Hello everyone, I hope you are all okay today and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I'm Marfisia and this is my channel where I share with you all fitness related content and vegan contents. So today is episode 9 of Vegan Fit series. We're going to talk about why plant-based diet is the best diet for you and why it's optimal for half leaf. So we're gonna do that with an amazing guest. So yeah, make sure you watch and I'll see you at the end of this video. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Amazing. So I want to talk about lots of topics in this episode because, of course, you are a nutritionist and you are a founder of Mush Nutrition, which is an amazing company that helps people, especially halfway, to thrive on a plant-based diet, right? So, yeah, so you are a writer as well. So you release an amazing book that I cannot wait to read um, that, of course, talks about plant-based diet and how it's optimal for health and, uh, yeah, it's the optimal diet for everyone. So if you want to introduce yourself and then we'll start to talk about different topics. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a pretty good introduction right there. But, uh, yes, I, so I'm, my, my name's Philip and... Um, I own and operate the company Mush Nutrition, and like you said, we work with athletes across many different sports from uh, rugby. I'm club nutritionist for an all-vegan rugby team um, called the Green Gazelles, and so I've been on with them since kind of the beginning of their journey. Um, I work with a couple of pro football players, uh, tennis players, some ultra runners, so across a variety of different sports. Um, all plant-based or moving toward plant-based. Um, so that's, that's my thing. I was, I, I, I'm educated in, in sports nutrition and anatomy and physiology and a variety of different kind of little sort of mini branches within, within nutrition and, and sports. Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Cool. So a question for you, how long have you been vegan and why you swapped to uh, plant-based diets in general? Well, uh, it was kind of a it was kind of a circuitous path. So I grew up in the states. I grew up in in California, and I was vegan in many years ago. I don't want to I don't want to date myself, but many 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 years ago, uh, yeah. before I moved to Europe. So I was vegan for about six years, and then I moved to France. And being vegan in France, and we're talking nearly thirty years ago you know, in the early 90s um, was not an easy thing because first of all, it, now it's a little bit different. Things have opened up and there's a little bit more progressive thinking going on. But back then, you tell people that you you don't eat, you know, that you're vegetarian or vegan. Vegan didn't even exist then. But you tell people you're vegetarian and they say, oh, well, here's some fish or here's some chicken. You know, yeah. so it, was, it was very, very complicated. And at that time, it was important for me to kind of I knew that I'd made that move and it was going to be a permanent move that I didn't want to go back to the States. So it was important for me to kind of find my footing and fit in with the whole French culture and everything else. So I kind of got away from the veganism. And um, it was now about, I don't know, maybe six years ago, something like that, six, seven years okay. ago. Okay, yeah. Um, that, I, that I kind of got back, came full circle back into it here. Um, but before, before then I had, I had stopped, I had stopped with dairy many years back and wheat products had stopped with all that and refined sugars and all that. So I kind of tapered, tapered down to, um, you know, just cleaning, cleaning things up a long, long time ago. And then just sort of getting back to veganism was, was, you know, a handful of years ago. Amazing. So when did you start your company and why? Why do you have this idea to help athletes for a plant-based diet? Well, I started my company, that's a good question, um, probably five years ago, mm -hmm. I'd say. And I've worked for most of my life in, in sports. 
um, primarily in for about 25, 30 years, I've worked at, in sports broadcast in television, um, covering different sports events, lots of lots of endurance events, cycling, marathon, triathlon, that kind of thing. Yeah. But but tennis and various other sports as well. So I was in the sports field and kind of was in close contact to some, you know, the top athletes in, in each one of those sports and kind of was understood the mentality a little bit and was more focused on doing something there because I saw that there was such a such a huge improvement that could be made in performance by with diet because you see what some of these, you know, people were eating and you think, well, if you were, were eating a little bit differently, you wouldn't be losing that, you know, final in a tennis, in a Grand Slam tennis tournament by two points. You know, maybe it's that little margin that puts you on the other side of things. Of course. So yeah. That's a really, really interesting thing to explore. So um, when I decided, I always kind of like going into things and then going into a, a specialty, specializing in something mm -hmm. direct. Um, so it was kind of a no brainer for me to go into, you know, getting my nutritionist degree in integrative nutrition and then going down that path of saying, I want to be specialized in plant-based sports nutrition because I think there's a real impact to have there. Amazing. So if someone is or wants to be an athlete and want to approach a plant-based diet, uh, what's the obstacle that you come across maybe people maybe resistant to uh, go through the transition because they're scared, they're not going to achieve the same performance, they're not going to achieve the same results. Uh, maybe if we talk about maybe bodybuilding, they're not going to achieve that muscle mass uh, if they transition to a plant-based diet. So what do you think that there are some obstacles and how we can make sure that uh, we let them understand that you can still achieve amazing results with a plant-based diet? Well, that's a good question, and it depends on each person, obviously. It yeah. depends. Everybody comes from a, a very unique perspective, yeah. and it depends on the sport as well, of course. Um, the, the interesting thing with food is that it's not just, I mean, it is primarily fuel that you put into your body to get a result out of your body, but there's so much more associated with food. There's culture, there's family there's tradition, there's all these things where all of a sudden you put into question what you've been doing for the past 25 years, let's say, for a young athlete. What you've yeah. been doing for the past 25 years is you're going to forget all that and not do that anymore. It kind of puts a, it puts the idea that what you've been doing is wrong, you mm -hmm. know, and that what your parents taught you how to eat and what they fed you and everything else is wrong. And so that's a, that's for some people, that's a really hard thing to, to change. It's just hard to get, you know, switch your mentality on that kind of thing. For other people, I just started recently working with, uh, with a guy who, you know, had a variety of reasons that he wanted to clean things up. And, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, well, let's, let's move slowly. So it's sustainable and, you know, do a little bit of here and a little bit there. And he basically said after three days, right? After three days of plant-based, he said, I'm in, I'm all in, I, I, I'm done because I feel the difference. I feel more, you know, energy when I'm on, you know, when I'm playing, when I'm practicing, I feel better in recovery. I feel better when I'm sleeping. I feel better when I wake up. So he just basically said, okay, I'm done. I'm done with everything and I'm starting new. But that depends on each each person. So I think to answer your question, that was kind of a roundabout response. But to answer your question, the the biggest obstacle is that I that a lot of people are worried that they're going to get enough nutrition. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get? Am I going to have enough food? Am I have enough protein? Am I going to have enough calories? Am I going to have enough energy to yeah. do what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I came across lots of uh, people that are interested to swap a transition, but they all have them, um, I would say, like, misconception about what it is actually plant-based diets, right? I mean, 80% of people, they think they would just eat salad. And that's the truth, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you know, and it's just a misconception. Or the opposite, they would just eat maybe pre-packaged stuff because now in the supermarket everything is ready there and uh, you know so there is lots of misconception that 
uh, unfortunately out there. So as a nutritionist, what's the first step to take, um, you know, towards someone transition? What's the first thing to take in consideration and what you suggest to start with? Well, I think it's important to, when you're making a change, and I'm a big proponent of making a big change. If you're going to, if you're going to make a, a, this kind of a, a life change, I think it's more difficult to do it, you know, gradually. I think it's, okay. it, it's um, I, always, I usually advise, you know, people to go, okay, take a week, look, you eat as you're doing, you've made the decision, eat everything that you've been eating before, take that week and go online, buy some recipe books, look at the, the vegan dishes, the vegan foods, the plant-based alternative things that you want to eat and make a list, just make, make a, put a file, put them all in a file so that you okay. have, so you spent a week researching, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this, I could, that looks good, that looks good. And then at the end of that week, the next three weeks, eat those foods that you've just researched and chosen for yourself. And at the end of those three weeks, generally people feel such a difference and feel such a positive changeover in their bodies that they just want to continue with it. Where I think it's more difficult if you're doing, you know, one, one meal a day because you're still keeping that door open. With okay. Meat, mm. cheeses, and, you know, that, those kind of things. I think it's more difficult um, than just doing a complete switch. But saying that, that's how my mind works. Everybody <laughs> is completely different. So it's finding what that, what the parameters are for each person. Um, but what I would suggest to people who want to make that change, especially for athletes, is when you're eliminating something from your, your routine, your nutritional routine, make sure that you replace that with something new. Yeah. So if you're just getting rid of meat and cheese and fish and all that and say, okay, I'm gonna, not going to eat that anymore, and, but I'm going to eat everything that, that's left that, that I was eating you're going to have a deficit in a number of different things. So that's why I think it's good to look into it for that kind of pre preparation week to say, okay, what can I use to change? Why, where can I get my protein? What is, you know, what are different things? What's tofu? What's tempeh? What's, you know, where can I get these different things so that you're moving one thing off your plate, but you're moving something in and onto your plate to replace it. So it's just matching one thing for another thing rather than creating an emptiness yeah i think it's really important that because many people they take away sometimes even meals just because mm -hmm. they think yeah i cannot eat that i cannot eat that anymore so it's yeah it's definitely more difficult by replacing it yeah and like it's individual i think you know because for example me i took many years to go completely vegan so uh it depends your background what you used to, to do uh, how much uh, animal product you was eating before, right? The amount. Mm. So, of course, if it is a lot, that will take a bit of time and um, to adjust. So, yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And that's all, like, a, you know, every, there's, that's why I, I, I really like the, the, I like the way, I mean, this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I like the way that I, I work with my clients because it's all individual. You can't, Yes. take one thing and say okay here's the here's the the you know here's the template and just do mm -hmm. this and this is how it's going to be because each person is different and each person has different emotions and feelings and different things about what they eat you know the food that we put into our bodies is really one of the only things that we actually have a hundred percent control over in our lives yeah you know, so so it's a very very important thing and it's and it's good. It should be something that's positive. You know, mm. meal, meals should be something that are are looked forward to. They're shared with friends or family, and it's there's a whole different thing of meals. It's not just going to the going to the service station and filling up your tank. Although that has that it has that effect as well. Um, uh, but you you mentioned something earlier that I just wanted to touch on, which yeah. is the process stuff. You know, there's so much out there, which is great. There's mm. so many new vegan foods and alternatives that are out there, but it's really important to make the distinction that vegan does not equal healthy. You know, yeah. you can, you, yeah. there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of junk food that is, you know, it's vegan. It doesn't have animal rights, but it still is junk food. 
it's still filled with sugars and oils and fats and all those things that don't have any nutrition in them. So it's really important to use those, use those things as maybe like transition foods, you know, the fake meat, the sweets and that kind of thing. Use those as treats or transition foods, yes. uh, but don't rely on those for your nutrition. The best thing to do is to go to the source, go to the plants and the legumes and the nuts and the seeds and the yeah. fruits and the grains and go to, go to the whole foods. That's, that's, the, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, so how important is, especially for an athlete or someone that practice sports, um, you know, multiple times per week, to really choose that wolf vegan food instead of that process? How does it affect in the performance, for example? That does make a lot of difference or it's just basic calories? Because many people think it's just calorie that matters, right? So... Are you distinct with your clients between just calories or the selection of what you actually eat? Well, I, I, I'm a bit of a strange one with the nutrition, especially with sports, because I mm -hmm. don't recommend that any of the athletes I work with um, count their macros, their fats, okay. their carbs, their, their protein. I don't, I don't recommend that because it's food at the end of the day. Nobody eats macros. Everybody eats food. So it's important to get a, a, a mentality around it where it's, th these are the foods that I eat and not to reduce it into the microscope so that you're just looking at the protein and the fat and the carbs. Because I mean, sure, as, as, as you know, in plant foods, there's fats and carbs and proteins in pretty much everything in very yeah. degrees. So if, if you really want to chart that out, it can be quite a, a scientific task. And it takes the spontaneity and the enjoyment out of eating. So what I would suggest is eating a variety, again, of whole, plate, whole food, plant-based foods. Um, and the way that I talk to my athletes about it, and to anybody, really, is that when you're eating the whole food, you're not just getting calories. You're not just getting proteins and carbohydrates and that. You're getting the vitamins, you're getting the minerals, you're getting antioxidants, you're getting phytochemicals, which are all combined to make your body a healthier place. And you're getting fiber. That's the most important thing. Yeah. The definitely. processed foods, the, the packaged foods and that stuff, they're very appetizing. They're very palatable because they've got sugars and fats and all that kind of stuff. And they trigger that thing in your brain that says... Yeah give me more of this so it becomes like this this kind of a, a vicious cycle that you get into um but with the whole foods you're getting so much more all of those extra nutrients plus the fiber and you know i i mean, can get really scientific about it but when you eat when you eat fiber your your gut microbiome right it's those trillions of bacteria that live in in your in your yeah. digestive tract yeah and those bacteria are responsible for pretty much everything that goes on in your body. Immune system, mm -hmm. inflammation, um, all sorts of different um, neurotransmitters, chemicals that trigger things in your brain. Those are the things that, that dictate all of that, right? So if you're eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of oils, fats, sugars, salts, that kind of thing, they will feed those bacteria. They're kind of like the the bad bacteria yeah. and the bacteria that those, that those things feed will proliferate and grow, right? And the, and the thing that those bacteria, their byproduct that comes from those bacteria is a thing called TMAO, which is basically a substance that is pro-inflammatory. So it creates low-grade inflammation. Over time, a diet that is heavy in those is going to continue to proliferate those bacteria and create more TMAO and more inflammation. And then it becomes chronic inflammation and injury and disease and all of those things down the road. Whereas if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet where you've got lots of dietary fiber from the foods that you're eating, mm -hmm. the fiber is, will feed the good bacteria. And when the good bacteria are being fed, they're growing. So the negative bacteria don't have a chance to come out, basically. Yeah. They don't have a chance to proliferate. So 
the thing that the good bacteria put off is short chain fatty acids and short chain fatty acids are essential for everything that keeps our body healthy. Of course. So it's, yeah. it's, you're really, that's, the, that's the super benefit of eating whole foods is you get that fiber with all the phytonutrients in it. Yeah. I mean, if we think about it, we take food so for granted all the time and we don't understand how important it is. I mean, we are, what we eat is so true when they say that, right? Mm -hmm. And I heard, I can't remember who said it once, but I heard the quote, someone said that like our gut is our second brain. And it was so true. I was reading a book, I can't remember to be honest, many years ago. And it was saying that, of course, how we digest and what we ingest in general, it just um, is the byproduct, basically, of how we are, like how we, uh, we perform in sports, our mood, our, everything, right? It does affect everything. And if just people would understand that, they would approach with a completely different way, right? So, um, Com completely because you're basically putting food into your body. And of course you have to have things that taste good to you. But if you understand that if you're putting, you know, sausages and cheese and white bread and sweets and cakes and sugars and alcohol and all that kind of stuff into your body, that that makes the bad stuff grow inside. <laughs> it's really tricky because I mean, there are some people who feel a difference like overnight, like the, like the guy that I was telling you about earlier, who's like, yeah. in two days time, it's like, done, I'm, I'm, I'm changing. But for a lot of people, the negative effects of mm. diet and all that are down the road. You know, yeah. they're not, they're not going to, you're not going to feel it when you're 20 or 25 or 30 or even 40 or, or 45. You, you'll feel those effects when you're 60 when you're mm -hmm. 65, when you're 70, when your immune system is already needing to be, you know, boosted up on its own. And if it's in negative deficit at that point, that's when, you know, disease and, and a lot of preventable afflictions kind of, kind of raise their head. So, and that's a hard thing for people to understand that I'm, what I eat now is going to affect me in 20 years. It's, it's so abstract <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, yeah. But, but over time, you get the benefit of feeling better now. Yeah. Your skin is yeah. different. Your hair is different. Your so true. There's no, there's no real reason to, to, you know, take care of your weight because your weight just kind of manages itself. You know, mm. got an ideal, optimal weight that they kind of settle into. And with plants, if you're eating stuff that doesn't have a bunch of, excuse my language, but doesn't have a lot of crap in it, then yeah. your body is just going to find its own balance. And that may be different. That's obviously going to be different for every person. But finding that balance just puts you into such a, such a, a good place, you know, mentally and physically and health wise. It's just, a, it's just, and it's an easy, it's a pretty easy balance to find really. Yeah, definitely. So interesting. Um, so, like you said, we're not counting calories, we're not counting macros, right? So what we need to make sure to prioritize in our meals if we're not actually counting them calories? So if we have our meals, what well, to make sure you prioritize first to make sure everything is in balance and we get the nutrients and then we need to, to make sure our performance is, um, is on top? A variety. Make, yeah. sure a, make sure you're eating a variety of plant foods. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's things that you want without de necessarily counting and keeping track of mm -hmm. each thing. You want to make sure that you're heavier on carbs, mm -hmm. which, is, which is grains and legumes and vegetables and fruits. Heavier in carbs than you are in fats. Fats you want to keep to, you know, a, a low percentage, you know, like what, like one avocado is about two thirds of what you want to be taking in, in fat for the whole day. So yeah. just, just, just kind of keeping that in mind. So not snacking on almonds and cashews and all that thing um, with, 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 you know, with avocados and using a lot of nut butters and yeah. all of that kind of thing. Um, but use them, but just don't make that the main part of your diet. So our, the protein intake for each person, 
really depends on what your sport is and what your goal is. But yeah. you can kind of you can kind of more or less judge that out depending on your weight and what what your goal is in terms of gaining muscle, in terms of trimming yeah. muscle, in terms of what that is. And that's gonna be kind of a fixed number, you know, depending on what your goal is. It's between somewhere between one point two and one point five grams per kilo of body weight, give or take. Um, and yeah. you don't really want to go well beyond that and you don't really want to go too much under that but if you when you figure that out and let's say like let's say you're 75 kilos right and so you're going to want to take in somewhere around 100 grams of protein off just yeah across, just for round numbers right so you look at you, you know you can get a, a, a list of of plant-based proteins and see which which things have certain amounts of protein to begin with so that you get an idea of what is what. Once yeah. you figure that out and you go, okay, if I eat a little square of tempeh with a protein shake and put some <laughs> seed in my oatmeal and do this and that and the other thing, I'm getting all that I need without you know, writing it down. At the beginning, you might want to just pay attention to it, but then once yeah. you kind of get an intuitive way of, of judging how much it is, you can be 10 grams less or 10 grams more in a day. No, it doesn't matter. Your body doesn't like shut down at the end of the day and reset every day. It, yeah. you know, it, it's, it keeps things going. It's meant to balance out. You know, people say, oh, plant protein is incomplete proteins. Well, a lot of plant protein is incomplete, but yeah. you're not just eating only broccoli. You know, you'll be eating broccoli with rice and maybe yeah. a salad and some carrots or some, some, you know, whatever. And so the, the, yeah. vari the variety of amino acids, the building blocks protein that are in the different plants are going to complement each other and yeah. they'll take care of it. They'll form themselves into what they need to be for us. You know, um, animals don't inherently have protein. Animals get yeah. the protein from the plants that they eat. So yeah. it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so true. People don't understand that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it took me to understand that watching some documentary. So I think just because the information, the know how there, if you don't really look into it, right? Because we all have this, I think we overthink protein all the time. People overthink protein, I haven't got enough protein, which I think we always get enough, but we put so much focus on it that it makes everything overcomplicated, right? <laughs> it should be so well, simple. Because... Yeah, and yeah. you know, in, in the Western world, the, the cases of people who are suffering from protein deficiency are, are no. practically not. Yeah. You know, and the, the problem okay. with too much protein, however, is, is a big one. You know, mm -hmm. you can get too much protein because after, after that, you're putting so much um, work onto your kidneys Mm -hmm. that you start to, you know, suffer from symptoms of, of, of that, you know. Um, there was a guy that I was working with, a tennis player, who was from South America, and he ate meat morning, noon, and night. That was his, that was his thing. And he was like, no, no, I don't want to do a nutrition program, this and this and this. And I said, like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And maybe a month later, he gets in touch and he says, listen, I've, I've got, I don't know what's going on, but I'm starting to feel kind of lightheaded. And I've noticed that when I'm working out or training that my sweat has kind of a different smell to it. And, you know, it's just, I'm just not feeling myself. And I'm yeah. thinking, head, I'm thinking, that guy's getting too much protein. He's having a hard time mm -hmm. processing. So we did the assessment and he was, you know, eating, eating meal, eating every meal. He was having meat, every single meal. And so we did a blood test and he had the LDL cholesterol, the kind of negative cholesterol. Yeah. He had the LDL cholesterol of someone who would be 70 years old and in trouble. You know, so I so well, yeah, we sat down and I said, listen, you need to, you need to stop because you're going down a road that's not just for performance and playing better and this and this. You're, you're in danger of, of your health, you know. Um, so he did. And he went completely plant-based. And within 10 weeks, we redid a blood test at the end of the 10 weeks. And within 10 weeks, his blood levels of LDL cholesterol had gone back down to normal of a guy who's 22 years old. 
instead of a guy who's 72 years old. Yeah. So he was able to reverse that and kind of, you know, bring that back into where it needs to be. But those symptoms will come up because your body doesn't need that kind of protein. And what it doesn't <laughs> need, it will do everything it can to eliminate. And that can be really taxing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, protein and carbs is always a subject that we can go over for hours and hours, but people will still have them that think the carbs is bad, protein is good, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you can talk with everyone and everyone would tell you carbs is the evil, right? So mm. I had lots of questions when I started to transition on a plant-based diet about people concerned that I was eating too much carb because of course beans and all the other stuff, they got lots of carbs, right? And uh, so what you would like to say to people, they, they try to avoid carbs and then they actually scared to transition to a plant-based diet because it's got so much carbs. So what you would like to say um, that maybe, uh, yeah, it will maybe convince them to uh, start to love carbs <laughs> and making sure well, they just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, for, well, especially for an athlete, right? Um, you yeah. know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're bodybuilding and your, your goal is to gain mass, right? Then you need to eat carbs. Because yeah. car, car, if you're any kind, of pro, any kind of athlete, if you're a professional cyclist, you need to eat carbs. Carbs are what fuel your muscles. Your muscle stores glucose, which it stores as what's called glycogen. And the yeah. glycogen stores in your muscles are what allow your muscles to be active and do the work that you're asking them to do, whether it's getting out of bed and going into the kitchen and making a cup of coffee in the morning that requires muscle movement that uses the glycogen that's in your muscles, which comes from carbs, oh. right? If you're going out and cycling for four hours or going into the gym and doing intense bodybuilding for an hour and a half, then your muscles are being asked to work and that work is coming from the carbs. The reason why people get so, you know, freaked out about getting too much, not enough protein is because, you know, there's, there's this adage of, okay, you've got to replace after the muscle breakdown of working out, mm. give your body protein. And so you yeah. can build up that muscle again. Sure, obviously, but you're not going to ever eat. I mean, if you're eating a variety of foods, it's very difficult to eat foods that have zero protein. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so the benefit of carbs is that that's, that's, the, that's the basic fuel that your body needs to do anything. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 why, it's why in, you know, when I kind of look at it and if I were to break it down percentage wise, I would say, you know, you go 70% carbs. Mm. I would go 70% carbs, 10% fat, 20% protein, give or take. You know, obviously that changes for each person, but, you know, you're never going to go, okay, 30% carbs, 30% fat, and 40% protein. Never. Yeah. The, car the carbs are always going to have the biggest place on your plate because they're, they're giving you what you need to be active. So true. I mean, I remember myself when I started to lifting weights and I started the process of building muscle mass. I was like, look at my first meal plan for my coach. I'm like, oh, there's so many carbs. I'm like, if you don't know what's behind, like as a nutrition, as a coach, you would understand because everything that you see, like people telling you the bread and pasta makes you fat and all the other stuff, it's been actually on our mind since we was like child, right? Like when everyone was telling you overweight, oh, it's because you're eating bread, because you're eating pasta, right? So it's just that thinking that I think it would never go away just because it's been there for so long and it's so difficult for people to understand. Yeah. Well, and, and it's important to, to remember also that all carbs are not created equal. Yes. You, know, you can get a, you can get a, a pack of M&Ms and right. it, it's carbs, you know, yeah. you can have a, you can have a, 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 a can of, a can of soda. That's carbs. You can have a plate of brown rice. That's carbs, you know, so there's different quality. You know, if you're eating, if you're eating a lot of processed carbs, like white bread, 
and yeah. pastas and white rice and that kind of thing. Of course, there's going to be less nutrition. It's going to be more of the, sh of the, of the carbs that don't really fuel um, much other than, than just the glucose. You know, but yeah. if you're eating the carbs that are complete carbs and slower digesting carbs like oats and, and whole grain rice and things like that and, and, and vegetables, those are the carbs that have so much other stuff in them that, and the fiber, that that fiber helps the sugars and, the, and, and everything get absorbed in a more um, reasonable pace. If you're having, you know, white bread with jam and you know some candies afterwards those will be absorbed in your body like that and they have no nutrition yeah. so they're going to spike your blood sugar levels they're going to create an insulin rush and the whole thing and then you get into this whole thing of well the carbs are bad yeah those carbs are bad but other carbs which are really fueling your body are necessary that said white bread with jam on it if you're an ultra runner and you're at mile 80 in a 120 mile race and you need sugar to keep your muscles going white yeah. bread and jam perfect <laughs> you know so it, it depends on what the situation is it, or, it depends on what it is yeah definitely yeah i agree so if we're thinking on again on our sleeve and um, people that practice sport so why the plant-based diet made a huge difference if we compare it to animal um products or, you know, a diet that has um, animal products. Why it makes so much of a difference when it comes to performance and health benefits? What's the reason? Okay. So when, when you eat animal products, there, there's zero fiber in dairy or animal products or fish. Meat, fish, dairy, zero fiber, right? If dietary fiber. So yeah. All the, that's, it's one of the primary, it is the primary source of saturated fats. Mm -hmm. So saturated fats are the fats that don't really have a positive purpose in your body functioning, right? So they will accumulate and your body has to digest them and it's very long to digest. So that's one thing is animal products will take days to digest, whereas plant products, you know, the, the longest plant product that you'll, that you'll have to digest might be eight, nine, 10 hours. Whereas animal products might be 72 hours right. of digestion. So your digestive, your digestive process is slowed way down because there's no fiber and it's trying to deal with all of these fats. And it's just as a little side note, I don't wanna to get too far off, but um, when, when you're eating something and your body is trying to digest, and you put something two hours later, you put something else in your mouth, the digestion process down below stops. Yeah. And what you're putting into your mouth, that gets the digestion process because there's more to break down. Mm -hmm. and that until what you've eaten goes through the stomach and starts to get caught up to the other stuff, then it'll start again. But that might be a couple hours. And then by that time, you put something else in your mouth. So it's really important to, for, you know, um, effective and healthy digestion to not eat animal products. That's the side thing. So when you're eating all the saturated fats, those fats that don't have anywhere really any purpose in your body, they, everything that you eat gets eventually either digested or used or put into the bloodstream to get distributed throughout the body. Right? So the saturated fats will find a way into your bloodstream and they will make your blood more viscous, thicker, right? So when you're performing as an athlete, the most important thing that you need is for your muscles to react to what they're, you're asking them to do in the most quickest, most efficient way, right? How do they do that? Yeah. They do that with oxygen, right? The oxygen delivery and the blood delivery to the very, very extremities of your body, those little tiny vessels after the capillaries, that feed the muscles and get rid of get rid of the lactic acid and do that whole transfer thing, mm -hmm. right? If those are working with blood that is liquid and as it should be, super efficient, right? If they're working with blood that is now thicker and heavier and a little bit more sludge-like, right? Um, the, the, the blood delivery and the oxygen delivery to your extremities, to your muscles, is not going to be as efficient. So there's risk of cramping, 
which means there's risk of injury. It means recovery yeah. is, is more difficult because you're not getting the transfer. You're not getting the oxygen to the muscles as quickly. So it's, it's, you know, you think, oh, I've got to have, you know, chicken breast and fish before I, I go out and, and play a 90 minute game. Well, sure, but you're going to feel like you've been hit by a truck after 70 minutes because your muscles aren't getting the oxygen. They're just not mm -hmm. getting delayed. So, you know, and then you're, then you're just, you're just delaying recovery and then delaying training after that. So it just kind of becomes this, a, a downward cycle after that. Did that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking there is so much into it that it will take hours for us to go through everything. But um, yeah, just uh, just love all the information because yeah, like like you said in the beginning as well. That yeah, if we don't know what we put in our body, what's the point, right, of eating it just for to do so, right, just to survive? Which it should be yeah, a bit more than that, just eating for survival. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, it's like a lot of people, especially the athletes that I work with, but a lot of people who want to make changes, I think getting to that point of saying, okay, I want to, I want to maybe improve something. Yeah. It's very, very difficult to, if you, if someone's invested in it and they say, okay, I'm going to actually try this and see how it is, they will feel better. They will, they will guaranteed feel better. And it's very difficult to then go, I oh, know I'd rather not feel better and I'd rather feel like I was before, before yeah. I just I want to make these changes. So it's really just getting to, you know, getting to a point of saying, okay, I want to make some changes. I want to see if there's improvement. I mean, sports, you know, results in sports aren't won or lost by huge margins. They're won or lost by hundreds of a second. You yeah. Know, grams of weight. The, the margins are so small that why wouldn't you give yourself an extra 1% of advantage or a half a percent of an advantage? You know, yeah. why wouldn't you? Because that could be the difference between finishing first and finishing fourth. Right. So finishing a hundredth. You know, it's, 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 the margins are so small and the gains are so huge that it's, it just kind of is, is a logical move, really. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So I have a couple of questions from uh, some of my followers. Okay. Um, they was asking, so <laughs> that's a question that he posts all the time. So why people think the soy is bad for us? Because there was multiple studies, of course, that was related with cancer and all the other stuff. I'm sure you had that question multiple times, right? Sure. Well, there's, there's a couple of things to look out for with soy. You want to make sure that the soy that you get is organic and non-GMO. That's the main thing because soy is one of the main crops, especially le a little bit less so in Europe, but for sure in North America. And mm -hmm. they're importing a lot of their soy now. The soy is the soy and corn are the biggest GMO crops in the world. Yeah. So you want to make sure that the soy that you're eating is organic and non-GMO, which is pretty easy to find now. I mean, that, that's yeah. you don't look so, so hard for it. Like you used to, it's pretty, it's pretty available. Um, the conception about soy being bad for you is that soy is related. People go, Oh yeah, but if, if there's estrogen in soy, well, yes, there is estrogen in soy, but it's different than the hormonal estrogen that exists in mammals. It's phytoestrogen. Yeah. And actually there's, it's kind of the opposite effect because phytoestrogen in, in the human body, you have, you have receptors, right? When you eat something or you ingest something, you have receptors that, that take in that thing. So there's estrogen receptors in the body. So when you're eating dairy and, you know, things like that, that have a high level of hormonal estrogen in them, that's going through those estrogen receptors. The phytoestrogen from soy actually binds to those receptors and kind of acts like a, um, a gatekeeper and doesn't let the other stuff in. So it's not like, oh, well, the estrogen in soy is the same as estrogen in cow's milk. Yeah. Totally, totally opposite, actually. Um, so the phytoestrogen, good. Hormonal estrogen, not so good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, just because they hear the name of estrogen, just people get exactly. uh, the concept from it. 
freaked out about it. But um, the soy, soy is good. The one thing to look out for just with in terms of like tofu and stuff like that, if you're getting tofu mm -hmm. seasoned and stuff like that, just yeah. be, be aware of the amounts of oils that are added to it to give it a different texture. The, the raw soy that you can get that you can then take home and season and mix up and do what you want mm -hmm. with it. So like the soy, um, I don't know, like the flavored soy or stuff like that. Just just yeah. read the ingredients and make sure that there's not a bunch of, a list of stuff that you don't know how to pronounce or don't know what it is. If that's the case, yeah. never, never eat it. If you don't know what it is, don't eat it. <laughs> so true, yes. <laughs> Okay, so I have another question from uh, someone else. Uh, so how important is supplementing for an athlete? So an athlete on a plant-based diet. Sup supplements. Supplementing. With... Yeah, supplement, supplementing yeah. for a plant-based athlete. Yeah. Well, supplementing for anybody, vegan or yeah. not. Yeah. I would say vitamin B12 for sure. Yeah. Say um, you can do it daily or you can do it weekly, but you want to be getting the right amounts of vitamin B12. So that's a supplement. Yeah. Um, depending on where you live and what your activity levels are outside, uh, vitamin D3. Yeah. That's, that's a go-to. Um, I understand you need to take that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah luckily, luckily, luckily down here outside of Barcelona, don't really need to take that. So um, it just depends on where you live and what the season is oh, and that kind of thing. Um, but the best, again, the best way to find these things out is get your blood work done regularly. Yeah. Get it done once a year just to, just to check. You know, it's better to check on levels than be surprised and have to, you know, be backpedaling and try to work from behind. Um, so, yeah, B12, D3. And, you know, a lot of people like to, you know, get like omega-3s and that kind of thing. I would rather get the omega-3s from my diet. Okay. I would rather get the omega-3s from chia seeds, ground flax seeds, algae, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because those are, the, those are the things that your body can um, translate into DHA and ALA and all the, all the things yeah. that are the byproducts of, of omega-3s. Um, whereas when you get it in a supplement, you're not sure that your body's actually going to be able to access everything that... that that you're taking, you know, might not be as bioavailable. So yeah. I like to get my omega threes through food, but that's just another form of supplementation. You know, in your oatmeal, you put a instead of taking a pill, you put a teaspoon of chia seeds and a teaspoon of ground flax seeds, and you're good. Eat algae once in a while, three, four, five times a week. You know, just a nori sheet like from sushi. Make some vegan sushi. Roll that up. That's got yeah. That's a good source. So yeah. So that's right. it. That's it. Yeah. Some, some, I must say, some, some athletes, um, vegan athletes, l respond really well to creatine. Yeah. Because creatine is, is generally found in meat products. Depends on, depends on how your body reacts to it. It can cause, oh. it can cause a little bit of, of water retention. Um, it can I, have, I need to yeah, cycle. It can just, it can just have, yeah, so tr play around with it. If you're interested in it, play around with it. You know, start off with low dosage, a couple of a couple of grams, and see how your body reacts to it. See yeah. how it makes you feel. See how your digestion is. See how everything is in your body functioning. If you notice a positive difference, great. If you if you notice no difference or a negative, then it's up to you. Um, but that's kind of an optional one. I don't really recommend it, so to speak. But I, mm -hmm. I, I urge people to do that if they're wanting to do that. It's probably more for more for kind of strength athletes and a little bit less for um, endurance. Endurance, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, last question: um, Someone was asking, let's see. Oh, can I get too much fiber on a plant-based diet? Is that any like? Is that too much? If there is someone that can get too much fiber. I sure. I mean, you can always eat too much of something. Um, yeah, I, think, right. I think if you're eating a variety, if you're eating a variety of plant-based foods, you, you will feel full in your body. You will feel the point of like, I can't eat anything more before yeah. you're going to have a fiber overdose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you, you, and you know, when people are transitioning, when people are new to plant-based they might feel some kind of weird digestive stuff. They might have a lot of gas. They might have a lot of bloating. Uh, because they're, they're, 
their gut, that microbiome again, is adapting to stuff that it hasn't had before. So it's creating all this new stuff. So give yourself a few days to adjust and mm -hmm. start talking, you know, if beans are hard to digest or stuff like that, start with really small quantities, introduce low and start to gradually grow it. But getting too much fiber, I think you'd have to eat so much food um, that it would be really difficult. But yes, of course you can always, people can always get, you know, over, over yeah. things. Yeah, um, it's possible, way, but unlikely, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Most people, most people, most people get, get way, way, way less fiber than they need. So the other end of the scale is pretty rare. Yeah, I think I come across lots more people that they don't get enough fiber than the people that they are overdosed. Definitely that. Yeah. Exactly. And like you said, especially on them, I would say like two or three weeks of adjustment. Um, you can tell if someone didn't have enough fiber before, because like you said, uh, the ad adjustment period will be a bit uncomfortable, right? Because they yeah. didn't get much fiber before. So well, you can... Uh, you, you, may, you may find yourself going to the loo way more often than you did before, which is yeah. normal because your body is functioning and being efficient and taking care of business. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing because our body tells everything. It's just that we need to understand our signal. The signal of our body that give us because it tells everything, right? But we just need to, yeah. It does. And, and the, the, the great thing about our bodies is that they're built to maintain balance. Mm. You know, it's always there. <laughs> if, 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 you, if, you pour, if you pour bad stuff into your body over and over and over again, that balance is like this, your body is going to really struggle as much as it can to come back to this point. And sometimes. Yeah does that and it and it kind of it shuts down sometimes it's so hard that it creates disease and stuff like that to create that balance but it will yeah. always strive to create balance so if you're putting in the good fuel then your body if you're putting in you know formula one fuel then your body's going to run like a formula one car yeah if you're putting in old beat down not such good quality oil your car's going to break down right you know yes yeah. <laughs> Thing. I mean, it's kind of rudimentary. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure. I couldn't talk for hours, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> it no, it's, really, it's really, it's passionate. It's, it's, it's so much fun. Um, if, if some of your, some of your followers do have questions and they want to get in touch, they can, they can hit me up on Instagram at Mush Nutrition. I'm more than happy to, you know, have dialogue and answer questions and that kind of thing. So they can just DM me on, on at Mush Nutrition and I'll get back to them. Thank you so much for watching my friends. You make sure you leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this episode, if there is any other subject that you want me to cover in the next episode too, any guests that you would like to see, and don't forget to subscribe. So make sure you have a great day and I'll see you soon.